Welcome to the Mr. Good Pliers Care of Home for Invalid and Geriatric Cars. Oh yeah, the engine's a 55. This one? 1955? Yeah, 1955. Yeah. All right. Okay, tires look functional. Does it light enough that we can just push it out? Guess we'll find out anyway. Old rumble seat, three window coupe. Not one of these around every corner. Some of it's here, some of it's not, but at least enough to do something with for somebody. Cool old body style, three window suicide doors. Pretty incredible something like this has survived over 85 years. I think, oh, I guess so. Maybe. Give me just a second. I'm going to set this behind this. Two stock gas tanks there. tires yeah that was how I originally made the deal on the cars he called and he said he wanted to see if I had any smaller tires for rollers because these are too big off like a four-wheel drive Chevy truck and he couldn't bolt the fenders on to mock the car up with them on there And then I brought him over and he was like, well, I don't know. I have enough youth and ambition to do much with this car. And so we made a deal on it and that's how it ended up here. <laughs> Thirty-five. She's 80, 85 years old. Geriatric car. If she could only talk.
Come to the Mr. Good Pliers Care Home for Invalid and Geriatric Cars. See, she's a bit of a basket case, but I think all the major panels are there to rebuild it. 36 front clip I had got at the junkyard auction. My dad helped me set it on there, but looks like that's probably a clip for like an eight cylinder car. Every piece of it's different the fenders, the grill, so it'll probably just end up getting resold if anybody's looking. See, the body itself is pretty much original black paint. There is some rust down below that needs repaired, but that was what I kind of got good at and enjoyed doing, and it's definitely not beyond hope. Somewhere in the last 16 years, this Escalade has crossed over from being a status symbol to a combination toolbox and bolt bin. <laughs> Surely there's something in here that'll be the matching thread to stick those fenders to the body, at least just for mock-up. Looks like those might work. Luckily the holes are still clean. Be enough to hold it anyway. Everybody remembers the big bumper pile out at the auction. Got them all hauled home. Showed that in one of the last junkyard auction videos. <laughs> Sitting out at my dad's here. Just going to kind of take a look. That Pontiac's a three rib. This here's a 40 Chevy, so that's a two rib. People joke that modern jelly bean cars all look the same, but... Vintage jelly bean ones, can too. Another two rib, 40 Chevy. I think that might be a Buick. It's not like really quite it. Kind of look across the ends here. I'm almost sure that's a 36, 35 Pontiac because it's got the center rib that's thicker and the two outer ones are a little thinner on the bottom of the pile, but looks like it'll wiggle out of there. So there's one, looks almost like there's another, that's got to be one right there. The other on the bottom that I just found in this front, they're both fronts. Because I just said they're fronts, but <laughs> because I've got the crank hole center there. Kind of a neat feature of 30s cars have that vestigial tail of the crank. You could still crank the motors if you needed to. This is uh, 37 or 38 I believe with the emblem there and the smooth. 35 had this large piece that was almost like a band with the Indian head. Pretty super cool deal. Dig them out of the pile here. This will be a good excuse to 
sort the bumper pile and get it kind of where I can start listing and selling them. Apologize for the wind out here. It's Kansas, what do you say? It's supposed to be worse tomorrow. Anyway, take a little look around the car here. You can see bottoms of the doors. Definitely gonna need repair. This is a wood body car. This driver's door, when you open it, it kind of drops because that wood's got some rod in it. You can see up inside the fender arch, that's gonna need repaired. That type of stuff for me is kind of fun to do. I just take an old inner fender and cut patches out of it. Use a shrinker stretcher, get them to size. This bead here got some rust in it. You can see they fiberglassed across that inside there too, depending on your standards and what you're going for. Tail panel, got some rust. I believe there's a piece that's supposed to go between those rear fenders and tie them together. I don't have that. Probably wouldn't be necessarily the end of the world to build something like that take a quick look up in the trunk floor i mean you can see a lot of these parts like the running boards and the trunk floor the trunk lid they've taken them and cleaned all the paint off down to bare metal so you can kind of see what you're working with some of that needs some patching it's got pretty thin there. I want to say this is actually the front seat cushion because it's got the split for the folding back. Radiator there looks really nice. At least it's repainted. I didn't check inside but I think it's been kind of reworked. Nice thing about these 35 and 6 that they got the turret top so no cloth insert to have to deal with on that same deal on this wheel well it's got the fiberglass this passenger side really pretty decent shape just a little bit right there by the fender bolt I guess there are Kind of some areas where they put that fiberglass cloth over. Just kind of depends what you want to do with the car, how far you want to take it. I don't think this is going to be anybody's $80,000 Barrett Jackson build. Passenger door, same story. It is missing that hinge. At least I don't think it was in the box loose parts got the seat there there's a new windshield I believe there's a back glass this flat glass on these cars pretty easy to cut new stuff there's the hood laying in there I believe every piece of the garnish trim is here except for no, it is. There's windshield, back glass door. Yeah, there'd only be four pieces because it's a three window coupe. So, unfortunately, nothing for the dashboard. Just the holes that you see there. It's got the cool old banjo steering wheel. Super, super neat piece. Windshield opening looks really good. Firewall looks really good.
take a look under the car. Have a view of the floor pan there. The frame itself is in really good shape. It's got the serial tag still on it. So I've filed for the title. By the time you're watching this, I'll probably have that title back. Frame is in good shape except for that cross member in the front. For some strange reason is rusted out. And a C down in there. There's just pinholes and pitting and you can see that kind of rust hole in the front. That cross member looks that way the whole way across. Wouldn't be the end of the world to knock that out and replace it. See the rust hole there. Really weird that the rest of the frame is so nice and that front got that way. You can see the straight axle there because this is the standard six model. The deluxe six would have had a independent front suspension. Another feature of the standard model was the single rear tail light. Deluxe models would have had two. The car itself is a 35. Catch that firewall tag there. This clip is 36. The difference between that is your 36 had the headlights up on the sides. Your 35 had them mounted on stands down here. I have one 35 bucket. I have one 36 bucket. Have the 35 grill. You can see it's smooth on the sides because the headlights mounted down on the fenders. I have the pair of 35 front fenders. I do not have the headlight stands. And I do not have the center piece. There's a whole another section that goes up to the firewall. The hood panels are down in there. I'll put them on the car for mocking together here. 35 also, it was kind of unique. They had these little decorative covers that went up on the fenders. Got the little Indian ornament that goes on the center of the bumper. Super cool piece. The rest of this I'm not really sure how relevant it is or even if that's from the car. It looks like throttle linkage and breather cap for the engine. The engine I believe is a 55. It's got the 55 date code on the heads there. It does turn over. If a guy wanted to use it in this car, it'd be okay, I guess. I personally probably would put a straight six in this car if I was going to do anything with it. I really like my stuff pretty stock, and this car, unfortunately, a lot of the stuff to go all the way stock with it isn't here, like the dash parts. I apologize if this video is a little choppy. I have edited and re-edited, partly for the reason that this car has me really on the fence. Something like this would really be a labor of love to put back stock the way I like it, to 
collect all the parts even to do that. But 30s three window coupe, I just don't know when a guy would ever find another one. You all know how I love my 70s and 80s cars, but something like this out of the 30s, it just has really majestic vibe to it. Seldom do I really ever ask for advice on this channel. If you want to comment and tell me what you're thinking, I guess you can. Otherwise, I'll just update in the description which side of the fence I decide to jump on. Quick little rundown of what makes the Rumble Seat Coupe the Rumble Seat Coupe. The lid is oriented with the handle at the top. So when you open it, it opens. You can see it's hinged on the bottom, of course. Got the little hooks where it holds that seat cushion, which I do not have, unfortunately. Wouldn't be the end of the world to build it. On the passenger fender, roughly in the middle, there was supposed to be a step that's intended to use to climb up into the rumble seat. Obviously you can see that's not there and there's no holes for it. All you can see is just the gas tank filler opening in that fender. If this car were to be restored back to stock, that would be one of the many missing pieces that would need to either be sourced or fabricated. You've got the seat cushion. You can see the end of the trunk pan here. It's got like the scoop shape, a regular trunk car. The trunk floor would go all the way up to that ending gap there. And then you can see you've got the two foot wells in the floor pan and the spare tire actually goes behind the seat there. You see the little notched well for that because obviously you wouldn't have the spare tire on the back of the car to be in your way to crawl in as a rear seat passenger. Is that covering, is that getting sound? Yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll get sound. Huh? I, I just edit it out. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to become a TV star. Okay. 